Hi, I am finally creating another sculpture and I'm really excited to share the process with you. So grab your eyeballs and uh, anything else you might need and um, I'm gonna give you a little look-see of what I made. So I'm an artist, a drawer specifically. So naturally I planned out my sculpture with a pencil. Did I burp mid-word? <laughs> I basically estimated the size I wanted the entire sculpture to be with my hand. And then I began sketching like out the rough shapes and then refining them as I saw fit. First, I drew a side profile. Then I drew horizontal lines across all of the, the important features like the nose and the eyes and stuff. And I began drawing a head-on version of the bunny to get an idea for how he looks from a different angle. So this would hopefully help me create him in like 3D, you know? This is really only my second attempt at a sculpture and my very first one from scratch. So I don't actually know what I'm doing. I'm kind of just winging it and uh, hoping it turns out. So now the basic form of the sculpture is planned out. I put my sketchbook to the side. I grabbed some tin foil, balling it up and squishing all the air out of it. And uh, this is basically gonna be the body. His wit wit body. I also grabbed some wire and I gave it kind of the shape of the ears. I did it in one piece of wire and then wrapped the fold of the ears with another piece of tin foil. And we have the basic structure of his head. I kept referencing back to the sketch to make sure I was kind of keeping things the right size because at this stage that seemed like the most important element to consider. So the tin foil is going to make up the core of the bunny. So it needs to be big enough to fill the bunny, but not so big that it like shows through the clay. On the package of the clay, I think it said, well, I think it recommended not having any part of the sculpture being more than half of an inch thick, you know, of the clay. So I kept that in mind when creating this core. I also used masking tape to connect anything that wasn't, I don't know, neatly connecting <laughs> and it just helped me build the shape a little better. Then it basically just came to adding more and more tin foil, building up that core of the bunny until I was happy with it. I was very careful not to leave any room for air because I heard or maybe read on the internet somewhere, that'd be more accurate, <laughs> that having air inside the bunny is what will create cracks in your clay while it's cooking because the air, air like heats up and then it needs to like get out or something. I don't know. But I wasn't gonna take any chances. Does it look like a bunny yet? What if I make him hop? Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> All right, now we've got a little tinfoil bunny sculpture thingy. It's time to finally add the clay. My last pack of clay that I purchased when I did my last sculpture, what, like two or three years ago? Oh my gosh. It wasn't as soft and I did try actually make some attempts to use that, but I realized that was not really going to be the case. So I did buy a new one. My last pack of clay though, it like had these like, I don't know, these neatly cut little strips, which allowed you to rip off just like the amount of clay that you needed. This one looked like it might have at one point. It basically was a solid pack of clay at this point. I don't know. It took some like unflattering tearing to get a piece of clay separated. But once I did, I just balled that up, rolled it out, worked it a bit to warm it up and make it softer. Then um, since I didn't have a rolling pin. I used this can of snow spray, which I've never actually used, but it's been on my desk since Christmas. But it worked really well to flatten the clay to make it like, you know, easier to wrap thinner layers around the tinfoil base. Now my bunny had a nice little flesh scarf to keep him warm. Ew. <laughs> but then it just came to like smushing it around and making it all even all over the entire base. Grabbing more clay, working it out, rolling it, flattening it until like the entire base, you know, besides the ears was covered. Of course, I'm constantly referencing my drawing cause I mean, I knew how I liked how that looked. So if I could make the sculpture look similar then I feel like I was in some pretty good shape. For the head, it, it still wasn't like protruding enough. So I grabbed more clay, made a ball, then ended up cutting like a little Pac-Man shape into it. Then I just sort of took that Pac-Man shape and I made him like eat the face of my bunny until, you know, it looked more like a bunny. Funny how that worked. But could have been better. He kind of looked like a hippopotamus. So <laughs> I took this funky tool. I don't know what you call this. And I cut into it to find more bunny, you know, trimming it down and sharpening the features best I could. Moving on to the arms. I continue to tweak these until the end and you'll see as this progresses. But I started by adding like a little worm and I made out the shape of the arm without the sweatshirt first. Then I made these like lumps of clay and I folded them all around the arms to make up the sweatshirt 
sweatshirt sleeves. Of course, smushing it around until it was like an even better shape. I found what worked best was actually globbing on way more clay than I could possibly need and then like chipping away at it and chiseling it down into a better shape. I've seen in videos of people sculpting, you know, like the people that know what they're doing, and they like create this perfect shape outside of their sculpture and they know exactly what they're doing. And then they like lay or wrap this weird shape that they already have and boom, it just like looks exactly what you want it to be. I'm not there yet. <laughs> So I'll just stick to my glob and chisel technique. I did try to keep in mind like the folds of the sweatshirt and although they get smushed out of an oblivion before the end and I have to redo them, I did find it super important for like figuring out the shape of the arm as I went. I found this blue rubber paintbrush thing in my sculpting kit and it worked actually really well for flattening bits and like refining shapes without cutting into it or leaving those like annoying, I don't know what you'd call them, they're like eraser shaving but clay, you know, the little bolly bits. Ugh, hate them. Hate eraser shavings, hate bolly bits. At least I'm consistent. I know it annoys me. <laughs> okay, so then I had one arm done and I had to repeat everything for the second arm. The other arm, I guess, he only has two. Yeah, so that glob, trim, chisel, smooth. When we have an arm. In the process of making the arms, for lack of a better word, perfect. I lost his hands, paws, stuff, but like I mentioned, I will fix all this later, it's all right. But first, I'm going to define the edge of the sweatshirt. First cutting in with that like weird circle tool thing, then globbing, rolling, flattening, and wrapping around another piece of clay to make up the bottom of the sweatshirt and separate it from like the shape of his butt, which is another part of the sculpture that I do like three more times. But I feel like each time I do it, I do it better. So it was not for naught. Is that a phrase? You get what I mean though, right? Also found time to slap a nose on there, which again gets completely overhauled during the facial reconstruction surgery later on. Oh, and I cut a little piece of clay to make up the front pocket of his sweatshirt, chiseling away at it until I like the shape better. At this point, I dedicated a lot of time to making like the overall shape right, but I realized looking at my sketch that my sculpture was like standing up too straight. So I ended up adding a bunch of clay to the bag to try and make him look like he's leaning over more. And then I figured when I add the feet, I can just make sure he's leaning the proper direction and it should all look right. I'm thinking. Then chiseling away at that added clay to refine the shape. And once I was happy with that, I actually re-etched the bottom of the sweatshirt because it was getting so smooshy. And then I cut into the rib texture at the bottom of the sweatshirt all the way around my little bun bun. I really wanted to give him legs. <laughs> Can you see how smooshed the top half has gotten? Oh my God. I need to like figure out how to hold this without destroying it while I work on the other bits. But first, let's add some legs. I basically just globbed clay. Are you sensing a theme here? <laughs> Made some like ball shapes and kind of just molded around where the knee should be. Then I cut away like the indentation of the knee pit. You know, the crease between like the thigh and the shin underneath the knee. You can kind of see what I'm talking about. Then I took another one of them Pac-Man shapes and I repeated that step on the other side, trying really hard to like get them even. <laughs> that was definitely the tricky part. Like it's one thing trying to get it to look like a knee. Then it's another thing trying to make it look like the other knee. Luckily I had the other one to compare it to or this would have been impossible. Was that funny? That was supposed to be funny. <laughs> I ended up obliterating previous work in the process, but what else is new? I spent, I think like nine hours on this sculpture. And if you thought that was all just like consecutive progress, then you got another thing coming. I feel like 50% of the time was just redoing things that I had previously done, but I bet that's something that could be improved upon, which gives me hope. All right, now we need to spend a little time on this butt situation. <laughs> As you can see, it leaves something to be desired. So I smoothed that out. I also did some extremely invasive surgery with my scalpel. The goal was to kind of separate the booty from the rest of the legs so that the ankles and everything else was like visible, you know, <laughs> once I actually add them. <laughs> then I rounded it all out and made it smooth again. Back to the front, I redefined the pocket and that arm area again. And then I thought, why not add a little tail, which I honestly didn't love, but I took a break, left that for the night and came back the next morning, which I started off really strong, doing absolutely nothing. But eventually 
I got to it. And the first thing on my agenda was to cut out um, a lot of that bunny back that I literally was one of the last things I added. Because <laughs> with fresh eyes, I saw that the reason he was like leaning too forward was actually because there was too much like structure in the back compared to my sketch. Like once I like laid it on there, I could see. And by changing the angle of the back, instead of like just making it thicker, and when I put the legs on properly, I should be able to fix this. But you know, first a little back surgery. Then I ended up taking my X-Acto knife and I drew a widow face on him, you know, bringing a little much needed life make it shiny happy i was getting a little frustrated with the circle cutter thing it kept spinning which was driving me nuts <laughs> So I ended up just using the X-Acto knife from here on out, which I'm not sure if you're supposed to use it with clay. And maybe that was dangerous, but danger is my middle name. Actually, no, my middle name is Convenience, which this also was. To be fair, moving to the X-Acto knife really started bringing my style into the sculpture because it made it so much more fun. Like, see how I could get a new shape for the bottom of the sweatshirt just by cutting into it. Also, I was able to start shaping like the wrinkles and the armpits even better just by like cutting out bits. <laughs> It's so much fun. Also recut in like the shapes on the front of that pocket area. Hopefully for the last time. <laughs> I found cutting with the knife and like switching to the blue rubber paintbrush thing to expand the cuts really worked well too for like the seams of the sweatshirt. Then we did some more invasive butt surgery and a triple rhinoplasty. That's like the nose surgery, right? I was still like looking at the face. I realized it was looking, it was looking very Dragonite. So a good chiseling helped that. Luckily I had my reference to look at. So I just did my best to match that. A little mistake that I made with like the entire sculpture is that I never actually looked at a reference of a real bunny. I only looked at my drawing, which I feel like kind of pigeoned me into a hole. That doesn't sound like a phrase either. Why did that come out of my mouth? And like, I know why I didn't look because like I wanted it to look like a bunny in my style, but I think just like glancing at a reference or two would have helped the sculpture in the long run anyway. So I gotta remember that for next time. I was just like so engulfed in it that I like, you know, forgot about reality a bit. That happens when I make art. Anyway, I didn't complete the face um, because I didn't want to do it like a hundred times because I knew I probably was going to be holding it by the face in the future. So I moved on to the other parts of the bunny, specifically the feet. So I basically cut out these weird square pizza slices and I made them roughly the same size so that these could be the feet. And then I sat the bunny on top to measure and make sure it was a good size. And then I realized the bunny was still leaning the wrong way. And so then I had to cut into the feet to make room for that adjustment that adjustment. Then I just kind of squished the pieces together and then I shaped out the back with my X-Acto knife. Also cut into the feet shapes to make them even more bunny foot shaped. And I gave them little toes. I hope the bunny forgives this extremely unflattering angle, but I realized I needed to create space between the feet and uh, yeah. This is how that looked. Mm. This is another one of those times where the X-Acto knife just made things so much easier and more fun. Like creating those chunky shapes instead of everything looking super smooth. It just, I don't know, it just makes me really happy. At this point, I realized I don't think I was gonna get away without adding at least some wire to these feet. They're kind of like, well, they are the base of the sculpture and they're gonna take a lot of um, abuse, I think. So I wanted to give them the best chance of being structurally sound. So I did take some wire and I kind of twisted it around and I gave it like a little pokey end that stuck straight upwards. And then this is probably not the right way to do it, but I had to work with what I got. I just stuck it up into the bunny, through the heel of the foot, directly into the base, towards the tinfoil core. Then I kind of just rolled out some more clay, cut that into like a foot shape, and then placed that underneath to hide the wire. Boom! It's like it never even happened. But it also did happen because I wanted it to, you know, in the first place, so perfect. I did have to reshape the bottom of the foot a little bit more just to make it more seamless and blend the two pieces together. The one foot ended up being slightly longer, which my original plan was to have one foot slightly forward, but somewhere in the process of these feet, I made them start at the same point, even though one was longer. So he just ended up having one really big foot. I also separated the legs a little more so they could kind of stand alone. That was kind of funny, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, next up, the hood. This also required a lot of trial and error. 
<clears throat> but I think that's kind of just the uh, theme of sculpting. I wanted to make the hood one piece, maybe even taking my like small knowledge base of sewing to make it look like a real hood. I didn't think that it was possible. So on my first attempt, I just started with this flat piece of clay, cut a half circle shape into it, you know, instead of a hood shape. This almost worked but I feel like it could have been way better. So I did end up removing that, balling up some more clay, flattening it out, and then using my first attempt just for measurement to kind of figure out what size I was looking at. And then I made sure the clay was big enough using that for my new plan, which was to cut these two little half hood shapes because I have sewn a hood before. And like, it's kind of amazing when you end up with these, like, you start with these like weird flat shapes and then when you sew it together, it becomes a hood. Like it's amazing. So I basically kind of just roughed out those shapes without a reference and uh, connected it the way I would if it was sewing. Well, you know, the best you can with clay because clay, you don't have to like sew it, you just smoosh it together. <laughs> and then I had this like little hood thing and I attached that to the bunny, making sure it was folding downwards like it would if it was like on a real person. All this kind of took was making sure it was connected where it really should be connected, you know, and then like pushing downwards on the excess. Honestly, <laughs> this worked really well and it made me feel really smart. The only small problem was that like the clay was really thick and nowhere near as like lightweight and uh, moldable as fabric is. So it did end up actually laying a lot higher than I wanted it to. So I just kind of cut that to mimic how I thought it should look. And whew, did it look good? I'm like so happy with this part. And now that I'm happy with it, I took this like small tool so that I could like shove it into the hood without ruining it. And then I kind of just went along inside pushing and fusing the hood to the rest of the body, making sure that there was no air in there. So yeah, I'm like ecstatic. It's all really coming together. I'm excited enough to like do the arms again. <laughs> and I was especially excited to try doing them because I had my kind of newer clob and chisel technique, which the X-Acto knife made so easy to do. I also found, which I did earlier, but I did it better this time, to basically taking a big flat piece of clay, cutting it to a size that I needed, covering the existing arm as if this was like the fabric of the sweatshirt. That way it formed around the paw that was sticking out and it just made it all look a little bit more like realistic -y, which is cool. And here we have it, my bunny. Everything's looking great, except those ears. <laughs> so maybe we should cover them in clay. I did a very similar technique that I did with the feet, placing two flat pieces of clay on either side and squishing them together and then kind of chiseling away at that shape until I liked it even better. <laughs> I decided halfway through though to bend the second ear just like slightly over, which was easy to do with the wire. I was actually quite amazed. I don't know why, but it makes sense. And I even like decided at one point that the ear was too bent. And even though it was like covered in clay, I was still able to just bend it right to where I wanted it with the clay on it. It was so cool. You can't do that with a drawing. I mentioned I love the like chisel texture of this ear because I love the chiseled texture of this ear. I just think it's so cool. All right, it is finally time to do the face, which I love drawing faces the most and sculpting is no different. <laughs> so I went through a lot of attempts at this. So I'm just gonna give you like a quick rundown of a few of them so you can kind of see my journey. First, I just kind of drew in with the X-Acto knife where I might like the little facial features to go. And I also added a little dot for the nose. Cute, I know. He's all squinty and happy with like a tiny little mouth. But then I was like, what would it look like with a slightly lower mouth? Hmm, no. <laughs> I didn't say. And then I uh, also gave him like a triangle nose with a little smirky mouth. Eh, what do we think? What do we think? Maybe different eyes? Ew, no. Oh gosh, that's worse. Maybe squinty? Mm, no. Let's let's just go back to what we had before. But maybe like, I don't know, a little more sticky outy. And then like blended that nose. Okay, I think we're heading in the right direction. So let's just give him like little pudgier cheeks. But oh wait, that like completely changes the shape of the face. So at this point now he like, I don't know, he looks like he's smiling. So I figured why don't I see what that would look like if he was actually smiling like a big toothy smile. So I just added even more pudge around this like teeth shape clay that I put in there. And I also went against my better judgment and uh, drew in every single tooth. <gasps> what is that? Kill it with fire. But did I give up there? No, no, I didn't. I still thought I could save it by removing all but his front teeth. Mm -hmm. And yes, 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 this was an improvement, but an improvement on like the most disgusting thing is still gonna be at least very disgusting. And I will admit, 
He looks really freaking happy. But I ended up completely removing it. I wanted something different entirely. I kind of just went back to etching it in with whatever this tool is. Does it have a name? Hmm. And then uh, we moved on to the tail and I basically just balled up some clay, poked a piece of metal into it and then poked the other end of that wire back into the butt of the bunny. And while well, convenience is my middle name, I realized this probably was a terrible idea, especially considering the like half inch clay rule that I stated previously. So I did the respectable thing and I created a tin foil ball and then I squeezed that ball with masking tape and then I wrapped some wire around that ball and then I wrapped that ball in clay. Before attaching that, I used a little bake and bond. Bake and bond. I used a little bake and bond to make sure it would stay because I was like, maybe that would help. It has not fallen off yet, so it's doing well. I ended up doing just a little bit of reshaping of the tail, but otherwise I left it pretty simple since I kind of like the style of the bunny and it all seemed to fit with it being more smooth. So I left it that way. Um, and then it's time for some finishing touches. We're getting so close. Okay, so I took a long skinny piece of clay, uh, cut that to be even skinnier. And then I wrapped that around the bunny's tummy to be the bottom of the sweatshirt yet again and then I cut the little ridges into it again imitating that ribbed texture and then I went around the inside of the sweatshirt and the bunny's neck with this little tool thing to make it look like they were actually separate pieces instead of one solid chunk which I think actually made a huge difference and I'm glad I did that and of course I had to add some little bunny toes again <laughs> and with that I was done sculpting but you may notice there's a lot of those little like clay shavings all over the place. Ugh. So that's where this um, older than life itself mineral oil comes in. Luckily my mom had this laying around. <laughs> and I took that and went all over the bunny, essentially like dissolving the bits as best I could. And then, uh, you know, smoothing out any fingerprints, I guess. So now that he's all nervous and sweaty, it's time for him to go in the oven. Are you ready for the grand reveal? Come on out, Bun Bun. Here he is, fully cooked. Now we can hang out with his buddy, the bear. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> okay, it's color time. I honestly had no idea what colors I was gonna do. So I actually went back to my sketchbook and I tried a few things. The first idea in my head was like pastel tie dye. My second was maybe just an orange sweatshirt so that he could match the bunny on my sketchbook, even though the bunny on my sketchbook has a bow, which I was realizing this at this moment that it will, that I could have just done that, but I didn't. Um, but doing this, I kind of was like, yeah, I definitely want a white bunny, even though I don't know what the sweatshirt's gonna look like. So I started uh, just painting the bunny white because I figured while that's drying, I can work on the design a little bit more. The first layer of white paint's coverage, it wasn't great, but that didn't have me too worried since paint just be like that sometimes. Sometimes. And I honestly was not quite tipped off to the greater disaster in my midst. <laughs> so I started the second layer completely unaware. It was still kind of patchy. And I thought maybe the problem was just that I was using fluid acrylics. So I grabbed some heavy body acrylic, which is like the opposite spectrum of thickness as fluid. And I just mixed those together to get kind of like a happy medium. So now it's just acrylic paint. And then I just added a third layer of white paint. And now it's looking a lot more prominent. Missing. And then while that dried, I worked on a third design idea. This was of like a blue sweatshirt, sort of like, I picture it like Polish pottery, that kind of stuff. Oh, I love it so much, it's so pretty. And I tried a few designs to kind of get a feel for how it would go and like, how would I create this design and like maybe some of the shapes that I'd use. And then I, I really fell in love with this idea. And But I figured with my little thumbnails that I was gonna have to paint the sweatshirt white first and then start from there and then add the blue on top. Gave the entire sweatshirt, a white base coat as well. And then I left that to dry. This is when I realized my predicament. The golden fluid acrylic paint is shiny and I hated it. Okay, not only was it like shiny and sweaty and gross looking, it also kind of highlighted any small or like big areas on the sculpture that like weren't quite right or smooth. So it kind of just like exaggerated all of my beginner flaws. <laughs> and I didn't actually own any matte paint at this time. So I had to run to the store to get some. I ended up purchasing this folk art paint since it was, I don't know, it said it was matte right there on the front. And yes, the bunny was dry at this point. And look, he looks still wet. What the heck? <laughs> now you understand the problem. Anyway, gave him his first coat and this is where we are at. Now he kind of looks like a powder bomb donut, which I kind of like. The shiny did not suit him. <laughs> Since at this point, there were quite a few layers of paint. There ended up being these like little weird blobs of paint, kind of like, I don't know, it made it look really sloppy. So I just took an old nail file and I filed those bits down, brushed off the dust bits, and then I added yet another layer of white paint. 
Did I mention that the day I was painting this bunny that it was also like the most humid, disgusting day we've had all year and every layer took way longer to dry than it should have? No, I didn't. Oh, well, it's true. And I already hate waiting for things to dry, so that was fun. I did mix a little bit of the white paint with some red and it made a cute pink color and I used that to paint the ears and then it was back to waiting for things to dry. When I had run to the store I also picked up this cheap matte paint in blue just in case I ran into the same problem with the blue and then I used that to paint on the sweatshirt. You know I started with like the dotting tool to kind of create like the intricate designs. I started on the end of the sleeve it kind of worked my way upwards. I did like a mixture of like circles dots and I also switched to a slightly lighter blue which I made mixing the blue and the white paint together and I feel like this really helped it look a little bit more I don't know intricate and planned out because now it had more I don't know color to it I don't know. but yeah like circle dots some lines the works and once I reached the top of the sleeve <laughs> I mixed um, a little black paint by using burnt umber and blue and then I drew on the little face when that was done I mixed the black paint that I had made with a lot of white paint and then I kind of just used that to go around the paws just bringing a little bit more attention to the shapes that are already there and then adding in like shading off camera and I'm not entirely sure what happened to my hand <laughs> I did repeat the sleeve design but I did the exact same thing so you get the idea then I went back to some of the blue paint and I colored like the rib hem of the sweatshirt and this is when I realized that that like cheaper matte paint wasn't quite as opaque as the folk art well I'm not sure actually but the folk art paint was kind of twice the price of the top notch paint I don't know enough to make an assessment but this blue paint definitely needed a second coat, but I had to wait for it to dry before I could do that. Then I took my nail art brushes and I started on the design of like sweatshirt base. I actually used some references of some, you know, pretty Polish plates for this. And I, I did my best to make it work on a sweatshirt. It's kind of mostly flowers and some leaves with some dots in between those to kind of fill in the shape more. And of course I used both the dark and the light blue just for a little bit more intricacy. And of course I can't forget the front of the sweatshirt and some nail flowers there too. And then I let this completely dry before moving on to the hood. I would have liked to add design to the inside of the hood, but uh, I realized that was gonna be impossible, especially after trying to fill in the inside of the hood with solid blue, because I realized even that was like difficult to actually make sure the paint got everywhere without seeing white, and that took quite a few coats. After all that was completed, the only thing left really to color, you know, besides adding another coat of blue <laughs> to the inside of the hood, oh, was adding more designs to the outside of the hood. So I went around adding like, little circles and dots to like the edge of the hood kind of imitating the sleeves while also leaving a lot of space for more design at like the main part of the hood and then for that I took inspiration from a completely different Polish plate which I don't know might be like a little messy because it doesn't really match the sleeves or the base of the sweatshirt but kind of what a part of what I like about Polish pottery is that they are all different and unique and like the mismatched but they also go together so I feel like it works anyway it's more flowers they're just different than the first ones. <laughs> Honestly, one of my biggest regrets, and originally something I had planned to do, which is probably why it's a regret, is I just forgot to add the little beans on the bottom of his feet. I thought that would have been so cute. I think I did that with the lion sculpture that I did, but I realized I'd forgotten to, like literally while I was cooking it, so it was too late. So I ended up just painting them on instead. It's not the same, I know, but like it's the best I can do. I also forgot to like etch my signature into the bottom, but that's kind of a slightly smaller regret. <laughs> anyway, then I just kind of like propped him up to dry so that, like none of his wet bits would touch anything. And he's done. What do you think? I am so proud of him and I just, I love sculpting. It takes so long though, so it's like hard to like set aside time to do it, but boy is that fun. I know I have a lot to learn, but it is like such a fun process. And I just want to like thank you for letting me share it with you. I honestly hope you enjoy it in some way. A little recap, we've got the first sketch, the color thumbnails, and my finished sculpture. I'm so proud of this. I still like looking at my first sculpture, which is crazy because like art from three years ago, sometimes you cringe, but I look back at that sculpture and I'm just like still proud of it. So I imagine a very similar thing will happen with this one. And yeah, I, I, it's so cool to have a piece of art on your mantle. I don't own a mantle, but if I had a mantle, that's where this would go. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.